Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Photographic Memory Podcast. I'm excited to welcome the program, Dr. Shannon Panza. Dr. Shannon, how are you? And uh, I see a different image today. Oh, yeah, it's all about the brain, right? All the different things you can store in it. <laughs> Absolutely. All the different things you could store in it and all that stuff. And you're going to teach me some a little about, about mental photography. But again, you're the mental photography expert. Understand photographic memory also brand management expert and mentor that people can learn more by going to zuxpro.com. So Dr. Shannon, today we're going to talk all about mental photography, which we introduced in episode one a little bit, but what is mental photography? Uh, to, for a short, uh, for a very short thing is it gives you the ability to utilize uh, taking in uh, 25 to to 50,000 words per minute to start with. It's using your photographic memory. Uh, the upward limit, there doesn't seem to be one. Uh, we, uh, we end up taking in a lot more information than what we believe that we're usually taking in. So this gives you plenty of opportunity to take in huge amounts of information. What I'd like to do is take the opportunity to uh, tell you a little bit about how uh, how this relates to, to reading, speed reading and such, okay. to give you a, a, a launching point, so to speak, as to what that really means. Now, keep in mind, we're starting at 25 to 50,000 words per minute. Your average reading speed, whenever you read something, is around 250 words per minute, give or take. The, uh, the amount of information that you directly get from reading is about 50% immediately. Wow. But then it has, and the reason why this has a huge fall off is because of this thing that you have in your brain related to the short-term memory called the hippocampus. The hippocampus acts as a leaky water glass. The more information you put into it, the more information leaks out. Eventually about 5% of the information gets transferred to the long-term memory. This is where you actually feel that you've learned something. But have you really learned something? If you've only gone through uh, reading material one time, chances are you're, you're pretty sketchy at the material. This is why people have to, uh, they have to really get into, uh, you know, quizzing and going over the information time and time again and reading, reading, reading. Uh, simply, and it's a huge time waster, simply to get up on the information that you're supposed to have. And the, uh, I mean, it, you get 50% uh, of the material immediately, drops down to 5% of the material, and that's what you're left with, unless you really spend a lot of time beefing up your material. This is the reason why a lot of people cram for tests, because they go in and they're a uh, couple nights before they start cramming for a test. They won't even sleep. And right, exactly. they just cram and cram and cram and cram uh, all, you know, all night long up until the time that they're uh, entering the test. Even after they're in the test, they they're told to put their books away. Finally, they get in there, they take their test, they pass it. And what we used to say right after the test you go out and flush it because you don't need to remember it anymore you've just right, exactly. you've just passed the test so the name of the game is actually passing the test not actually necessarily having right, usable exactly. information after the fact <laughs> well what it, uh, this is good. one of the big problems that's not good okay. that, right, that you remember you memorize everything and then forget everything after the test Right. Well, that, that's typically how we do things in, in our society today. So, uh, so that's really what happens with reading. Now, let's take a look at speed reading. Well, the key thing is whenever you have uh, the word speed reading, you also have the word reading in there, which relates back to this relative concept of reading, where you have a lot of, uh, where you have a lot of loss at. So on reading, uh, on speed reading, uh, let's say you start at 500 words per minute, maybe up to uh, maybe up to 5,000 words per minute. Hey, you're doing so much better. Now, 
what is really interesting, and, and we'll revisit this fact later on, even though you're reading less words because you're, you're hopping over heaps and heaps of material by doing this, even though you're reading less words, your, your comprehension of the material immediately goes up another 15%, up to 65%. Well, exactly. that's much better than reading. But there's this, there's this old program that says, and this is what our, our reading teachers bell us up with every day, is our reading teacher will say, you must read every word verbatim to get the information. How many times have you heard that? A bunch. A bunch. That's right. And this is, it's actually a program. And that program actually interferes with things like speed reading, because speed reading, you know that you're not reading everything verbatim, you're skipping over most of it. But yet the stats prove that speed reading is actually better than reading. Right. And the reason, the, the reason why most people revert away from speed reading back to reading, usually within 90 days, is because their, their mind thinks that they're skimming and scanning over the information, so therefore they're not getting it. So they go back to reading, back to the slow, uh, sluggish way of doing things. Now, speed reading, yes, you get the 65% immediately, but then about a week later, uh, now reading has its attrition rate within 48 hours. Speed reading gives you an attrition rate in about a week. And it too goes down, maybe not as far as reading, but it goes down, uh, say around the 10 or 15% before that goes to long-term memory. Now keep in mind, the, even though speed reading, uh, you know, speed reading has actually increased in your value as to what you've gotten from the material and, uh, and also, it's, you know, it's delivering more to you overall. Uh, but yet we talk ourselves out of it and we go back to reading. Exactly. Now, when it comes to mental photography, mental photography is a quantum leap above either one of these things. Exactly. It's a, it goes 25 to, 25 to 50,000 words per minute. This equates to turning pages at a rate of one term per second, exposing you to two pages of information each second. What that is going to, that's where we start at. If you're going any slower than that, forget it. You're not doing mental photography, you're doing something else. Now, that's the, that's the rate at which we start. And this information, there's that thing called the hippocampus, the leaky water glass. Well, this information doesn't go into the hippocampus at all. It ends up going to your long-term memory directly. That way, you get 100% of the information. So that is your retention, 100% of the information for the rest of your life. And it's a matter of you just learning how to stimulate the recall of that that information and we we give you some practical methods how to do that as well the the key thing is to do a lot of mental photography whenever you're doing a lot of mental photography it retrains you how to use the photographic memory and actually get this information back at 25 to 50,000 words per minute you have 100% retention of the information okay. but Whenever you're going through the pages, you tend to miss pages each time at that speed. Exactly. So let's say you get 77% of the pages you've actually seen them the first time through. All you have to do is you go through the, the book three times over. You easily get into the 90 percentiles because you miss different pages each time. So your, your retention rate is going to be well and truly at least 90% of the information by going through the book three times. Correct. So, uh, so what this is actually doing for you, let's put it into real, real, world, real world terms. If you're reading a book 
you're going at less than one page per minute. Right. If you're if you're mentally photographing a book, you can go through a 300 page book three times over in less than 10 minutes and have that book for wow. the rest of your life. Now, how long would it take you to read that one 300 page book? Probably a few hours. Yes. Or more, depending. Or more. Okay, depending, depending upon how complex it is. So we're sitting here in a wonderfully big library and it reflects really what it's all about when it comes to what you can really pack away in your mind. Uh, and really, there, there doesn't seem to be any upper limit. I, I often have a, a question. Well, gee, is my mind going to, is my brain going to explode with all this information? No, it doesn't. I'm physical proof of that. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so yeah. no, it, it just takes on more and more information and you develop your brain more and more. The more that you do the, uh, again, what we have discussed before, the more that you enable your photographic memory and you use your photographic memory, what happens? You strengthen your brain in great ways, okay? Now, uh, again, we will, uh, later on in the conversation, I plan to revisit that extra 15% on the... Uh, yeah, absolutely, yeah, definitely. So we go yeah. into... So far, we talked about what is mental photography, where did it come from, and how was it invented? Well, back all the way back in 1975, for some of you, you weren't even born yet. Uh, back in 1975, uh, Richard Welch, my mentor, he actually went and invested in a speed reading, speed reading company. Now, this is after Evelyn Woods came out. She created speed reading. Everybody was on the speed reading train. And uh, the, there was inherent problems in the system. And Richard Welch was not the type of person to just take those and, and uh, not want to make the system better. So what he did is he, he found some questions that no one in the industry was willing to answer and couldn't answer. And in, in speed reading, the question is, what happens to the words that are no longer so vocalized? And he asked that one question. Now, here, before Evelyn Woods came along and invented speed reading, the only thing that anybody had been taught for the last couple hundred years was reading. Exactly. Unless you happen to be uh, a rebel. Right. So this is the way everybody learned and was expected to learn. Um, if you did not, if you did not learn how to read or did not have the capacity to, or were enabled to, not unable to in some way, well, you were very well looked down upon. If, if you were given the opportunity and you still could not read, well, uh, yeah, you know, it was a and terrible thing. Luck. It's life, thing. life's over. Right. So uh, what Richard Welch uh, found out is that uh, there, was, there were certain principles in speed reading. And the one question that wasn't answered was, what happens to the words that are no longer so vocalized? He set out to answer that question. And he did so with, uh, he, he got together with some universities. They did some studies. Uh, it was all privately funded. So he was able to, to keep things under wraps. And eventually this led to the discovery of mental photography wow. because it was found that at the rate of 25,000 words per minute, you could no longer subvocalize, which is a key, key thing when it comes to reading. You could no longer subvocalize each word. In fact, you couldn't subvocalize any words. So you were literally taking mental photographs of full pages of, of information, thus the photographic memory. Now, today we know that there's a quantum signature that goes along with this as, as well, which leads to much higher, uh, higher abilities for us to take in that information as well. But back then, 
uh, quantum physics was more of a newer topic, and it really wasn't thought of in this way. But let's, uh, let's revisit this here. So Richard Welch set out to, to find out what the question was in, in light of understanding what answered the question. The, the answer to the question is the words that are not subvocalized are actually doing the job that goes into your subconscious and actually raises your ability. And this is that extra 15%, which was discovered in speed reading because the stats were all there. Yeah. And he was looking for why is this going up whenever you're reading less words? And the truth is, is that extra 15% is based upon what you're not reading. So you have to it's read all, going, you have to read all. It, the it's going into the, subconscious directly. Whenever you read, you admit it, you initially only get 50% of the information. When you speed read, you get 65% of the information with a lot less effort. He was looking for why that 15% was there. And he made yeah. an assumption that it's doing something within the subconscious. This is what led to discovery of mental photography. And it was, found, again, it was found out at 25,000 words per minute that you can no longer subvocalize the words and thus you're no longer doing anything associated with reading. It now becomes a different brain function right. that utilizes your photographic memory. So are how you, are, so you, are you following all yeah, this? I, I'm following. It's a lot, a lot, but it's very interesting in the fact. So how can you gain by learning it? So basically we talk about where it came from and who invented it, but how do we get, how can we gain by learning this? If we learn this, learn mental photography through Zuxpro method. Well, the most obvious thing is dealing with large volumes of accurate information and this is this is really key. Whenever you're mentally photographing information, you're getting that hundred percent. It's going into your it's going into your long term memory. You have it there for the rest of your life. Uh, you are dealing with information at a completely different level. Now, whenever we're talking about the the quantum physics aspect, this is a mental photography is applied quantum physics. Oh wow! So literally. Your mind, your mind is a fantastic device. It will allow you to pick up extra information that has been embedded into the reading. Whenever you have, uh, whenever you have an author and that author is an expert, Whenever that person writes into that book or creates that book, they spend a lot of time and energy thinking about what they are doing. That energy is then tagged along with whatever they're writing. This is why if you pick up some books, you can have two books that look exactly the same, same right. number of pages, same dimensions, everything else. You pick up one book, and it almost feels heavy. Okay, that's a that's a book that's written by yeah. somebody that knows what they're doing. It take forever to and read. The other, and the other book you pick up, it could be almost the same information, everything, but you pick it up, and it, there's no way to it. Why? What what's wrong with this book? It's plagiarized. Oh. You can, you can actually tell the quality of the book this way through your mind being able to weigh the two. You can tell which one is real and which one is plagiarized. Of course, we have places like Amazon that there are so many really, really good plagiarists out there yes. <laughs> that are selling their books. They're great marketers because they don't have to spend any time on the research. They just glue things together. Exactly. <laughs> How so how far can we go with this? You know, you said pretty much we can learn this and we can gain well, knowledge. How far can we go? Okay. So essentially, the mental photography itself 
is, is really your greatest brain exercise that you have available to you. It's not only good for information, it is actually gonna equip you with so much more of your own brain power to do anything that you wanna do in your life better, easier, faster. It's great. If you wanna change occupations, if you wanna elevate yourself in your occupation, right. if you want to have a better relationship, if you want to uh, have a wealthier life, if you wanna have a lifestyle, right. it looks whatever like when it you is. Tell me, it looks like when you tell me that, it's like, wow, if I could read 20 books that are important in digital marketing, I can make a lot more money. If I could read 20 books in social media marketing, if I could read 20 books in project management, or just you know, really read books that are knowledgeable that can apply those to my daily business. It'd be unbelievable compared to the slow process of learning things. Well, how would you like to, uh, how would you like to, I, I use the word loosely, how would you like to read a thousand books in a year? That'd be unbelievable. Easy if you're using your, if you're using your photographic memory. In other words, mental photography. Wow. So, uh, and you will get an intense level of in information as well. There is a little bit of finessing along the way, but the point is, is you have that available to you. It's always been available exactly. to you. This is, this is the reason why so many people were like, oh, well, look how much I had to study to get my degree. Yeah, you <laughs> did. That's because you were using reading, maybe speed reading. Okay. Well, suffer it, get over it, put it aside, learn this, learn how to do better from this point on. So they, if they want to take action right now and they're in episode five, still not taking well, action. Well, we, we hadn't, I hadn't actually answered your question. How far can you go with this? This is, this is infinite. Okay. It's infinite in the ways that you can use it. It's infinite in uh, all the wonderful things you can do with it. Um, I'll give, you, I'll give you one really right. clear example. Now, this person is, is proficient with the mental photography, obviously. Uh, lady was a, um, a legal secretary. Her job was to go down to the bankruptcy courts, uh, in this case, in Denver, for the state of, uh, state of Colorado. Now, that's like going into an airplane hangar. All these different files all over the place. And it, it's just a daunting, daunting task. People get lost in there for days looking for a single piece of paper. Right. And what, what she did is she spent a day just going up and down through the aisles, mentally photographing locations of all the files in the entire place. Just oh one day. All she did was walk up and down the aisles in, in, in the same way that we teach you. And... What she did is within 15 minutes after that, within 15 minutes, she could walk in. And usually it was a matter of walking to that place. Oh, wow. Uh, where, the paper, where the paperwork where it was. She would walk straight up to it, get it, and leave all in 15 minutes. While everybody else would be, even the people that had worked there for years and years couldn't do what she could do. She could even find files that were misfiled in a box that it shouldn't be in that's the quantum secret there that's the quantum information it's the vibration the frequency whenever you get really really good at this that's what you can do you can find things that you really have no chance in finding exactly. on a regular basis so basically i said infinite growth but people that want to get started now have been not taking the chance yet, go to zuxpro.com. Right. And, and that's all you have to do. That's a great starting point. It is uh, the best thing you can do for yourself. And in, in today's world, you can do it right at home. Isn't that neat? Exactly. All right. So zuxpro.com, check out all your different social media, listen to all the different podcasts, and uh, we'll chat for episode six soon. So appreciate it, Dr. Shannon. No problem. Thanks for having me. All right, guys, that was the Photographic Memory Podcast. Take care.